Our scripture lesson this morning is from Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter 12, beginning with verse 38. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, they say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May we hear in these words the gospel of the Lord. Don't you love this text? Wouldn't you love to have Jesus sitting up here on one of these stools and and when we uh, do the offering, uh, you can just kind of feel his eyes piercing and and watching everything we do. Um, I don't know about you, but it's kind of daunting. (laughs) You know, um, when Jesus finds a... Uh, usual, normal activity that is a part of, of the synagogue and the worship and, and the upkeep of the, of the uh, synagogue and, and all who uh, work within it. And, and, and he draws attention to uh, the givers, and, and it's on the heels of this uh, conviction, I think, of, of the scribes and, and knowing their hearts, knowing um, that sometimes we human beings um, have motivations that are, are less than uh, pure, possibly, and, um, and that they're, they're doing things to be seen and to uh, draw attention to themselves. Um, what an interesting scenario to kind of sit with Jesus in, right? Um, wondering his thoughts, but then also paying attention to our own thoughts. It raises for us, I think, all kinds of questions about abundance and poverty and what motivates our giving and why do we give. Um, It reminded me of an old, old movie um, where the tagline was, uh, show me the money. Um, I think I've mentioned that before uh, in in this past week, uh, thinking about... um, that athlete who was like, okay, I need to, I need to find the biggest paycheck opportunity um, that can help me a, a aspire to my goals. And, and it, was a, it, was, it just became that tagline. Um, show me the money. Show me where it is. Show where it goes. Uh, am I going to get the results? And, and isn't that an interesting way in which uh, we come to looking and observing the treasury of, of our lives and, and the treasury of everything um, that, that we offer our resources into, whether we choose to or whether it is part of being a citizen. I mean, that's part of our, I think, responsibility is to, is to at least assess and, and look at what are we doing? Where does it go? How, how is it helping? Um, and you may be familiar with all kinds of um, money gurus that give us all kinds of directions um, about how to evaluate and prioritize. Um, but I, I, I sit with this woman on All Saints Day, and I think, what does that truly mean? I mean, is Jesus lifting her up as a saint, someone who gives out of all of her poverty? And, and what, did that, what did that look like? What did that mean? And was she giving out of the poverty of spirit? 
I mean, just think about, he may have been, some scholars are pushing against um, the, the idea that she is lifted up as an example for us to follow, but more is lifted up because she was trapped in a system that would, would continue to abuse and, and uh, oppress her if she didn't do something of her part. And so out of her poverty, out of the injustice, uh, out of um, oppressing guilt to be a part of the, the, the synagogue, Maybe it, was a, maybe it was an injustice that Jesus was lifting up to say, can you believe that that's what we allow to happen? That we would let her give all that she had to live on for the sake of our organization and, and structures and, and put her in harm's way? You know, that's a whole different kind of uh, perspective or, or view. Um, so I wonder, what makes this woman a saint? You know, to, to be... Uh, in the story today, I just, it was like, what, what creates a saint for us? Um, I always like to use the definition, um, I was posting the other day about it, you know, just that a saint is some, a sinner that falls down and gets back up. I think I heard that in a song one time. I thought that was pretty cool. But a saint is a sinner who falls down and gets back up. A saint is someone who lives knowing that the mercy of God is always enough. And therefore, out of that, they're able to give and to, to get back up. So I want that to be her reason for giving, out of her need to give, out of her need to know that even though this may take everything else away from her, even if she's giving for the sake of a system that oppresses her and isn't taking care of her well uh, as a widow, that, that she still has the faith that if she does this worship action, something is always going to be there tomorrow that will be enough to take care of her. That's what I, you know, like, that's the saint I want to follow. That's the, the saint that, that kind of, I sit in the chair next to Jesus and say, oh, you're right. That's amazing. I want to be like her. And then there was another saint that we won't hear her story today, but, but um, it's the Old Testament lesson. And it's that Saint Ruth who, out of her poverty, out of no place to go, out of nowhere to, to reside, she chooses to stay with her mother-in-law, Naomi, who basically is at the bottom of the social realms of existence. I mean, she's lost all of her resources, lost all of her status, and is having to return home, and she knows that she will be living in poverty. Now, she's resourceful, and she has a plan, but Ruth is just, I mean, she is out of her poverty. She is going to give and trust. Somehow, she understood Naomi's God to be one of faithfulness and, and one of provision. Maybe it was because Naomi was just, I mean, like she must have been like a mother-in-law of all mother-in-laws. Think about that. Orpah didn't stay. Orpah said, okay, I, I'll go see how I do with my home country, and, and maybe I'm young enough that, that I can find someone to take care of me, and, and that was that social realm. But Ruth followed and gave everything, trusting in what was going to come next. She had no idea what family members Naomi had. She had no idea, but she knew Naomi to be a woman of love and grace and faithfulness, and it was enough to trust her. I wonder if Ruth was a saint that kind of lived out of a poverty, knowing that there will always be enough to give back, no matter what state you're in when it comes to God. There's such a contrast between those uh, two saints that, that I lift up and, and the show me the money mentality of the, you know, show me what you got, show me that I'm valued 
uh, let me uh, let my coins jingle in the treasury so all can see. Put my name on it on a plaque. Oh gosh, let's be careful with that. And 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 know that it's not the appreciation issue. It's the um, it's the desire of the heart that motivates the need to be seen and 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 shown off and shown up. Um, when we think about there being enough, um, if we all strive to be a saint like like these women, how do we trust that there is enough? And there's this uh, thing that's been going on for many years um, in our world uh, called the penny principle or the penny power. Um, you know, some some years ago, someone figured out, oh, if we put at the checkout counter, you know, an ability to increase your your receipt with just a few pennies that we direct to St. Jude's or we direct to Good Sam's uh, Samaritans or we um, organizations, uh, HEB does the same thing, you know, just always... Give one dollar, give just two dollars, and you think about the power of that, and then banks got onto it, and they were like, oh, you know, you can open up a savings account, and if every time you round up and put that money into your savings account, you can, you can accumulate the power of the penny, right? Everybody understand what I'm saying? And, and I think it's the principle that we just... We just need a little help sometime to realize there's always enough to give. Even when we're at our lowest, even when life has thrown us a chaotic story like Naomi and Ruth or or we're a widow and we're on our own, there's always a little bit to give. Always enough to just add a little bit that is an act of trust and faith that tomorrow is always in the hands of God and there will always be enough. That is a, an attitude of abundance. We as faithful people, sinners that fall down and get back up, we have to continually remind ourselves when we fall into scarcity and thinking, oh, I don't have enough or, oh, you know, the church, we're just never going to get back. No, we're not going to get back to where we were ever, you know? Like, hopefully we'll get beyond and even better than we ever were. But, but it's a, it's, we can't fall into that scarcity thinking of it's not ever going to be enough. It's not gonna, we, don't, we won't have enough to give um, because we do. We have wonderful things to offer the world, the gospel, the good news, and the Jesus that sits and says, you know what, I see everything, and I know your heart's. And when you give out of your need to give and, and you give out of the depletion of, of life, then I'm going to be there and, and I'm going to notice that and I am going to increase and, and, and let you feel and understand that it is enough. This church, years ago, I want to say it was under the direction of Tim Abel, you know, when y'all started doing the changing of the world offering? You know, penny principle, right? Somebody's got a little bit of change in their pocket, and if you just keep adding to it and directing it to something bigger than you can do by yourself, the world is changed by that. We started our campaign this past month, uh, stewardship-wise, um, with mighty giving kind of as our theme. And, and so today I just I add it to the saints theme of, you know, saints are those who mightily give, and they mightily give in the way in which Christ gave, out of poverty, out of setting aside all his authority and power in heaven to come down into a manger and then give of himself every single day until we took the rest so that he could give even more. That mighty giving doesn't flow out of scarcity ever. But it flows from humility and understanding that all of our resources come from God. 
and God's generosity at sharing space and creating space for all of us. And it flows from knowing there is always enough in God's economy. Mighty giving, as we will call it in the coming months and, and, and next year, I hope, as we continue, is always born out of a spiritual practice that reflects a stubborn dependence on God's faithful provision. Mighty giving is a spiritual practice that reflects a stubborn dependence on God's faithful provision. And mighty giving requires faith that you have enough to give. May this widow, may Ruth, may those who have taught you how to be a giving person or those who are continuing to teach you how to be a giving person, may they inspire us with their faith as we reflect on what it means always um, to give of ourselves because there's always enough. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, The widow in Mark found that she had enough to give, and we believe that we have enough to give as well. Guide us and direct us, point us in the direction that you would have us to go, in the way in which we give to one another, and we give to the missions of the church, and we give to you out of our gratitude and faith. Bless us now as we come to give all of ourselves once again in this act of communion and our acts of offering. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.